Hi guys, welcome to Learn to Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. And today we're talking about straight and level. First of all, we have to know the definition of straight and level. By saying straight, we mean we're flying a straight line. But how do we do it when we're flying the aircraft? We try to look for big features straight ahead from the aircraft, such as a big lake or big mountain. Now all we have to do is keep flying towards that big feature, and that's how we know we're maintaining a straight line. Also, we can utilize the onboard instrument like the compass. So the compass in the aircraft is not the exact same compass as we normally use. The normal compass shows a direction. However, in our aircraft, it shows a heading. But what is a heading? A heading essentially divided the normal compass into 360 degree and we call that heading. And when we're trying to fly in a straight line, all we have to do is maintain the same heading. For example, let's say we've been maintaining a westerly heading, all we have to maintain is 270 degrees. Secondly, level. When we talk about level, it has two meanings. The first meaning is the wing has to be level. The second meaning is we're not trying to climb or descend. We try to maintain the same height. And how do we know we're maintaining the same height? when we're flying. We can refer to the altimeter. Pretty much like the heading, we just have to maintain a constant value on the altimeter. Another important indication to look at is the airspeed indicator. In short, when we're flying straight and level, we have to maintain a constant speed. In summary, when we're flying straight and level, all we're trying to do is maintain straight, maintain altitude, and maintain speed. Next up, we'll have a look at four different forces during straight and level. The first force to talk about is the weight of the aircraft. This force acts from the center of gravity of the aircraft vertically downwards to the center of the earth. It is the force that is pulling the aircraft towards the ground. In order to allow the plane to be flying, we need a force to counteract this pulling. That's why we have the wings. If you remember from the last episode, the effects of control, you will know the wing creates lift. And this is the lifting force that counteracts the weight completely. They are acting in opposite direction with the same amount of force. When we consider them together, they are perfectly balance and there will be no net forces. The third force is created when a propeller is spinning. It accelerates air and pushes air behind it to create a forward force, which we call thrust. The last force is drag, which is acting on an object going through air. Instead of accelerating, the drag will slow you down. Thrust and drag are acting towards complete opposite direction, but yet same amount of force. If we look at these two groups of forces, lift and weight, thrust and drag, they are all equalized and there will be no net forces. We call this state the equilibrium. When we fly straight level, we have some work cycle to help us. Before we dive straight into straight level, we'll have a look at the pre-entry work cycle. H A L Heading Altitude Lookout H Heading will nominate a heading that will maintain throughout the exercise. You also want to set that heading into the heading bar, which is on the G1000, to remind ourselves which heading we are maintaining. For example, let's say now we're flying towards the west, we want to set 270 on our heading bar. And throughout the exercise, we'll try to maintain 270 degree of heading. A altitude, quite similar to our heading. We can also set the altitude bug on the altimeter to remind ourselves of the altitude we are supposed to maintain. Lastly, L, lookout. We have to make sure before we enter this exercise, there's no one that's close to us that would affect our safety. And we have a specific way to look out. So you look to the left first, then center, center, right. And if you don't see any other aircraft, we'll start our straight and level exercise. After the lockout, if we're happy there's no other traffic that's close to us, and we've set our heading bug and our altitude bug, we'll start our entry cycle. P-A-S-T, power, attitude, speed, trim, power. Depends on what type of cruise we're doing. If we do a fast cruise, we'll set 24 inches of manifold pressure and 2400 of RPM. For normal cruise, it is 22 inches of manifold pressure and 2200 RPM. If we're doing a slow cruise, set manifold pressure to 18 inches and 2200 RPM. If we're doing safe slow cruise, set manifold pressure to 18 inches, 2200 RPM, and also take off flaps. With the flaps, please don't forget to check speed. Make sure our speed is below 108 knots before deploying the flaps because that is the take off flap speed. A. 
Attitude. We will use our fingers as units to measure the distance between the dashboard of the aircraft and the horizon. The more fingers measured means the gap between the dashboard and the horizon is greater. It also means the aircraft pitches down more and you should see more ground. On the other hand, if the numbers of fingers between the dash and the horizon is decreasing, it means the aircraft is pitching up more. You get to see less ground and more sky. When you are flying in fast cruise, it is about 5 fingers attitude. For normal cruise, it's about 4 fingers. Slow cruise, 2 to 3 fingers. Safe slow, 4 fingers. S. Speed. Depends on the type of cruise we're doing. For a fast cruise, it's about 130 knots. For normal cruise, it's about 120. For slow cruise, it's about 100. For safe slow, it's about 90. T. Trim. If we are pushing forward on a control, trim forward. If we're pulling, trim back. After the entry cycle, we will be in straight and level. In order to maintain a straight and level, we have a maintenance cycle called ALAP. A-L-A-P Attitude Lookout Attitude Performance Attitude In this case, it depends on the cruise that we're doing Lookout Left Center Center Right So we divide the whole lookout into four different sectors However, in each of the A-Lab cycle, in the lookout phase, we'll just look out for one sector So for example, if this time, in this A-Lab, we look out to the left hand side the next one, we'll look out for the center, and so on The next one, A attitude Same as the first one, just another opportunity to double check Lastly, P performance We'll be looking inside, in our cockpit, on our instruments So what we'll be looking at Remember before we enter the straight and level, we set the heading, altitude and the speed So in this case, we'll be looking at those instruments to make sure whether have been maintained Also, it's a good practice to look at our engine indications every now and then to ensure the engine is in a good condition do you guys remember the work cycle we've talked about earlier in this video? The work cycle for pre-entry is HAL. So for the heading, we've already set the heading to be 139, we'll be maintaining that. Our current altitude is 2500 feet, we'll be maintaining 2500 feet. Now we'll look out, clear left, center, center, right. I can't see any other aircraft that is close to us, so we'll continue. Entry cycle is PEAST, power. Our normal cruise power setting is 22 inches of manifold pressure, 2200 RPM. Attitude will be 4 fingers. If you can see the horizon, which is where the line, the sky and the ground meets, put your hands on the dashboard. The horizon should be on top of your four fingers, and this is your correct attitude. Speed is roughly 120 knots, you guys can see from here. Trim. Right now I'm actually pushing a bit on the stick, so we have to trim forward until I can let go of my hand. And the attitude is maintained four fingers, that is perfect. So now we have entered the straight end level, and we'll move on to the maintenance cycle. And that is A-L-A-P. Attitude, four fingers. Still maintaining, look out, we are dissecting the look out into four sectors. We will look into the center left sector first, stay at this sector for 5 to 10 seconds, so we have cleared this area. Back to attitude, still four fingers. Performance, my heading is still doing 139 degrees, but I've climbed a little bit. So what I will do is I'll push the stick forward to lower the nose, so I can get back down to 2500 feet, and I'll maintain that. We'll keep going with our A-lap cycle. Attitude, four fingers. Look out at the center right sector this time. Attitude, four fingers still. Performance still maintaining the correct engine setting, heading, and speed is good. And we got back down to 2500 feet. So now I can raise my nose to maintain four fingers attitude. Attitude, still four fingers. Look out, we can look to the far left this time. No one's close to us. Attitude. Performance is still maintained as before. Attitude, look out to the far right sector this time. No one's coming at us. Attitude, performance, heading is good, speed, altitude is good, and that is how we fly straight and level. Lastly, to the crucial part of flight training, threat and error management. So what are the threats that may impose to our flight today? When we are changing power, it's essential to know the sequence of changing power. When we're increasing the power setting, pitch first, then throttle. Right to left, blue to black. When we are reducing the power setting, throttle first, then pitch. Left to right, black to blue. Not only the sequence of changing power is important, 
but also when we change power we have to be smooth and gentle with the engine to ensure the normal operation. Another common mistake that I see students make all the time is when they fixate in the cockpit a little bit too much. What I mean by that is they're looking inside the instrument excessively. What they should be doing is looking outside more. I'm not suggesting that we should not be looking inside at all, such as during the performance scan, the PE cycle, we should be looking on our instrument to make sure all the heading, speed and altitude has been maintained correctly. But we can use a rule of thumb of 90% of the time we should be looking outside for traffic, for the landscape, for the ground features and about 10% of the time we'll be looking for inside for our performance scan. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time. Please like and subscribe to Learn to Fly YouTube channel and also on other social media platforms. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Yeah.